Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Andrei Shevchenko, and on behalf of Ukraine Media Center Current Forum, I want to thank all the journalists who tell the world about our fight for freedom. Our today's guest is a special guest, is the Minister of Agrarian Policy and Food of Ukraine, Mikhail Solsky, and we want to summarize the last year and we'll think together about the year coming. We will have an opportunity for formal and informal conversation with the minister. And without losing time, I would like to pass the mic to Mr. Mikola. What? Thank you, Mr. Andre. Thank you, dear colleagues. Thank you for coming. We postponed this event this meeting previously today it's happening and today we would like to summarize what was going on in the agrarian sphere what the ministry was doing it's something that we'll start with later on during the official conversation and off records we made talk about what's in my opinion and in opinion of the ministry and the market will be going on in the year coming, at least the variance of the development, some things that we feel sure about and some threats that may emerge this year for the agrarians. And we will exchange thoughts in this regard. I think we will start with the presentation that the ministry drew up that characterizes in the brief what the ministry was doing during the year it's clear during these months of war and the main work was related to the challenges brought by the war after that i will give a couple of comments regarding the things that were happening this year and we'll proceed to the plans for the next year and Julia.
Well, it's clear that during presentation it always looks beautiful and complex, so that's why let me start giving you some comments about what was shown in the presentation. First of all, the regulation. Really, during the year there were a lot of the regulation acts adopted comparing to the other periods and I personally like everybody says but it doesn't always happen this way I'm adhering to the point of view of simplification of facilitation no matter how specific it sounds the war helped everything <clears throat> the argument that during the war we have to import everything without excessive permits and we were doing things that we were unable to do previously we were stumbling upon some myth and other stories why that was impossible and in the sphere of the regulation we did a lot and we can talk about it separately but generally this presentation this page of the presentation looks like what what kind of the regulation is that it's related to export and import to transportation of the goods inside the country it found its reflection in the fact that this year we could sur surreptitiously undertake two reforms that we were waiting for 20 years uh, related to herbicides and the seeds with the uh, very powerful facilitation with the seeding material the next thing is support of the agri agrarian sector the money for agrarians were not allocated this year and uh, all the money forwarded this year for agrarians were the <clears throat> terminal story with, within five seven nine loan program that the country the state extended the loan and you you had to only pay 20 percent while the state covered 70 percent and the, the the pledge could be uh, could amount this 20 percent and it could be wheat and the agrarians <coughs> landed the agrarians borrowed more than 40 billion hryvnias and none of these loans is non-performing for the time being and this may serve as an example this part of 579 program european union extended 50 million euro we added for the support of the smallest farmers i mean that those who have less than 120 hectares of land and less than 20 cows in the summer we launched a program related to to horticulture and greenhouses the main work is done through the banks as you see 378 million applications were approved <coughs> we agreed it with the world bank and they allocated funds budgeted for the next year and the level of trust to this program will be high enough and it's good in my opinion the, this under this program we can create new jobs and horticulture should have been developed way before the war and the main factor holding it back was the absence of the land market uh, people keep investing and we were falling behind all of our neighbors and all the agrarian countries in the world today today it's a good idea for for the for those who live in the country for the veterans the compensation is high enough 17 percent per hectare and this is something that the farmers can do and we talk a lot about it we talk frequently about it this leaves in the summer we had quite a powerful concern about the fact that if the 
uh, grain corridor is not opened in the sea we will have no place to store no place for storage of the seeds so with the help of canada with these sleeves and and japan through fell we procured all the available sleeves throughout the world for seven or eight million tons and the equipment for loading and transportation of these seeds of this grain <clears throat> i think you haven't heard within the last couple of months that, that there is no place for storage and it's with account of all the breakdowns in operation of the ports and with account of the losses also there was a number of, of program ex for the grain and buckwheat extended by buyer we covered that issue it's uh, qu quite frequently discussed in ukraine and we have to give their canada it's due that they re react uh, at all the requests of ministry of agrarian policy there were uh, many uh, programs related to cattle farming sponsored by them for the next year we will support the greenhouses the program for of compensation under 579 also the, there are one time payments for the smallest agrarians and 50 million dollars not a small amount in my opinion that all the elevators everybody can procure new elevators or switch to lpg within this amount of 50 million hymnas or they can switch to lpg or solid fuel boilers also there is money allocated by the world bank for procurement of wheat and corn for the countries of africa but they will hardly go there because grain from ukraine was advertised a lot by the president of the country and many country allocated funds for for that so the donor funds will will be channeled that way probably to whole horticulture and also there is another one big program that we were working together with ifc on more than one billion dollars they can do relanding and we ask them to decrease the uh, uh, amount of the loan because the first check the extent is usually and to forward the those funds uh, to the medium-sized agrarians it will take time but i hope we will launch it this year however we have to uh, expand 579 for agrarians this year because they end up in a situation when they have to work but unfortunately the majority of them doesn't make any money this year this year uh, last year we launched the uh, agrarian register it made the work of the sector more transparent it was developed together with the world bank and which is the indicator of trust to this uh, program and USAID will launch a number of programs through this platform next year agro logistics we, what we can emphasize in the area of logistics are a number of uh, important results first of all under the calendar what happened is the cancellation of fees and restrictions for import of the products to europe it's very important unfortunately for the time being it's temporary but the europeans are ready for this and it's good that they are ready to to discuss how it will be happening in future ukraine wants we want europeans to tell us one time for for example we don't cancel everything within one year but we will keep cancel it in with this certain period but so that they tell us how it will be happening and within which time frame so the processing industry will understand the coordinates because it's the best logistically rich market available for ukraine and how it was 
happening before this how it did not stimulate the processing in my, because the Europeans were coming every year and they were providing quotes and fees for these or those types of products and what will be happening next year we will tell you next year and that's why none of the businesses can comply with the projects depending on some politician including the European ones another important thing is what the country top management were doing Ministry of Transportation and other agencies we were engaging in a number of uh, negotiations in it's obviously the grain deal with Turkey and United Nations which allowed us exporting sufficient amount of grain it has a number of nuances due to a slow control on the part of the country will know during the passage through Bosphorus Strait but we keep working another important thing is definitely that a lot of work was done in agrarian sector with the neighboring countries with Poland Hungary Slovakia and Romania in terms of uh, uh, export of Ukrainian grain are under facilitated procedures and to be forwarded to the, through their ports. The Europeans in principle reacted uh, at many requests of the Ukrainian <coughs> government and that they allocated 1 billion euro for development of so-called solidarity ways. It's a generalized uh, notion for everything that goes through Europe. Euro integration there was a lot of routine work in the ministry because if we take the association agreement that sets more than 2000 tasks for us 690 something are related to Ministry of Agrarian Policy because it's about the agriculture and food so there is a lot of tasks and Europe pays a lot of attention to it this year no regardless the war the ministry was doing its job and dynamics is noticeable and the, by the amount of the tasks fulfilled we can take pride in them after extension of the candidate status for us what I've seen uh, and the Europeans held a number of trainings for representatives of different ministries the number of tasks increased multifold and the terms that they set are incredibly short compared to those that other countries had that's why starting with the spring we start creating different negotiated procedures is complicated because Europeans have quite a complicated opinion of the agriculture that we will have to discuss a lot and there is a lot of bureaucratic and non-creative work that we will be facing pretty soon irrigation and development of fish industry a lot of attention were, was paid to th this sector talking about the war what's going on with the fish industry in Ukraine today we it's allowed to fish in the seas in the Black Sea and the Sea of Azov in the basins of Dnipro but you had to have a permit and a quote before today everything was done without the bid there was a committee the evaluation committee which evaluated you by a number of factors and they provided you with a quote besides if you would have liked for example if you would have wanted to cultivate the oysters in the Black Sea somewhere around Odessa it was also done without the bit so most of the things that were done in the fish industry is that those procedures become became more transparent starting 
this year if so if anybody wants to buy a boat for fishing they can do it at the lowest price at the best price so this is the main thing that changed but there was a lot of work because in every sector of fishing we had to implement the bidding procedure to identify the bids to disallow monopolization and in my opinion that's the main thing that will forward the development that will pull the development of this industry because there is the, the joke in Odessa that, <coughs> that the, the, they fish one ton of fish per day but only in one street 10 tons are eaten as to the irrigation this story we have to let it go and we have to develop it two things that should be done in this field in my opinion one is already done but one is in progress and it will be adopted i think next year what's closest to the farmer those are pump stations and those areas when water is where water is allocated it should be given away to the farmers the law is already adopted and at the level of the ministry we fulfilled all the te technical things so that farmers could procure it and create the union of the water users and we al al already agreed it with the world bank that they will allocate funds for that so the farmers are a lo locomotive just like previous 20 years and thanks god i hope they will be the locomotive for irrigation and the, another reform that should be undertaken is the main main way channels but there will be a lot of fighting in this area a, a lot of other work we have a lot of work done in with regard to grain from Ukraine, the grain which is forwarded to Africa, the representatives of the ministry are going there next week and they will do their job there. So without going very profoundly into detail, this is what I would like to summarize for the year. So sh 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 should we better allow the journalists ask questions about this year or proceed to the next year yeah let, let's start with the questions i i would like everybody to withhold from the publication of the news by due to security reasons and if if anybody has questions please let me know Good morning, Mr. Minister, Alexander Kotak, Ukrainian radio. Everything is clear, seems clear, but the question is as follows. What did we lose during this 10 difficult months of the war? The agrarian sector has some losses in terms of land or horse farms because unfortunately agrarian sector cannot go without it and unfortunately we we lost something and we keep losing so let's start with the clear figures <clears throat> we lost about 20 percent of the lands they are uh, under occupation at the moment and those are the lands m that were given us winter crops because is the winter wheat and barley and sunflower area those very lands will be most densely mined because talking about for example Chernikiv and Sumy what we faced immediately in the spring after liberation of those area is that we were thinking that the size of problem is way bigger and the first week after liberation of those territories there was a lot of uh, appeals by the agrarians we were doing something all the time 
all the time we were discussing something with state emergency service and then things changed dramatically why it happened because this is the power of farmer movement is it has high competition and they have The, 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 the composition of those people themselves is very powerful because they were formed during this period of competition. It's not that they inherited it, but they were fighting for their farms, for their lands, and there were a lot of challenges. So all, everything was happening quite swiftly because the agrarians agreed it with the state emergency service themselves. The, the, they passed with their people with across the fields with GPS, they identified the coordinates of the landmass and the emergency service was coming and they sp were spending way less time than they would have used otherwise. So that's why the work was fulfilled way faster. In, in fact, the density of mines was uh, less and I think in, in the south we will face a bigger scale of such problem. We were already facing it and during yesterday's meeting we already was dis we were discussing this problem. For example, why we prohibited any burning in the fields. And now we need some technological solutions to gain access to a, at least some, visu some visual access to the landscape to identify the location of the mines. So there is a lot of technical issues uh, to de elaborate any rules. So, so uh, other than uh, uh, the, the, the lens, yeah, I, I focused on it. Thank you for drawing my attention to it. So we lost a lot of dynamics generally. Every year we were developing very f quickly. We had 108 million tons. To this last year we, we had 60 and something tons. So we canceled a lot of projects uh, in the area of development. And this loss of dynamics is for a number of years, I think. If, for example, tomorrow Say, say we, we win within, within a month and uh, something happened in Moscow and they finished this war under the conditions that we deem necessary. So this dynamics is something that we, we've lost practically in every sphere. But I'm wondered by a lot of things. I'm surprised we started the export of a, a lot of corn to Europe. In regardless the war, we were preparing a lot, we were building the factories and we became so competitive, competitive that even during the war period we pushed France and other competitors out of the market. And now that we asked Canada and France to provide the humanitarian aid, but so they were saying like first you import it to us and then we export it back to you. So what gives me hope is that what we've been just talking about is the fact is a very competitive environment. You know that practically every farmer represents something by themselves. They are not like random people and no matter how difficult they feel this year, You've seen 96% of the fields that were under control of Ukraine, they were cultivated and they were harvested. Fantastic prices for gas, but we dried it all. Fantastic prices for transport, but somehow we exported it. So we were doing the section, the breakdown by loans and the vast majority of the farmers paid their rent before the new year. I, I mean, they know that they lose, but farmer is not just about the money, it's the lifestyle. So no matter the conditions, they know that next year they will, whatever it costs, they will try to do something to sow something with 
but they have no other plan. Yes, the dynamics for the next year is such that we will most likely harvest even less than this year and we may talk later about the reasons for that. Olya Pashko, you were saying about the Euro Integration Act and after the Euro Integration, did we already implement any laws and how many are left to, are still left to be implemented and how many million tons of grain were sent were exported thanks to the grain corridors or maybe separately within uh, grain for Ukraine and what's going on with the land market or is it developing or did it stop? Again, so the first thing is regarding Euro integration, second grain from Ukraine and general statistics of the grain export. Well, the Euro integration legislation before the new year, we were orienting uh, the plan agreed during the signature of the uh, association agreement and the, the laws that were contemplated by that plan were adopted this year. The part of the plan for this year, it proceeds to the tasks that are already new in compliance with the status of Ukraine as a candidate. So it's already another phase, is the next phase, but now that we were moving in this express method, so the main things that were adopted is the regulation of the herbicides, the regulation of, of the seeds, and the uh, amendment to the law about the veterinary medicine, the new rules, is the European rules that will be applied. This year we will have a lot of work at every In principle, we're trying to coordinate it with other countries similar to us that, that, that have a way more similar to ours than others, like Polish and Lithuanians, so they tip us off at some things that we wouldn't have paid attention to or that they do, did not. And by the am amount of uh, lands transferred to the agricultural st and about the application of uh, genetically modified organisms and the euro integration and herbicides so there will be a discussion about this GMO, what will be the procedures and what will be the crops that will be allowed to be sown in Ukraine. But off records, we all understand that these nuances exist in uh, Ukraine, specifically in terms of soy, for example. When we're talking about the grain from Ukraine, it's hundreds thousand tons, not millions, talking about the grain corridor, the sea grain corridor. During the autumn month, we were exporting at least three million tons, except for August, maybe million and something. I think that in general, it would amount to 15 million tons until New Year, the land market. The land market is operating as we were expecting, we didn't stop it. Moreover, we uh, renewed the operation of the register and we think it should keep operating. It's not as vivid as as somebody would have expected or I, I wouldn't say as somebody would have wanted. The prices are obviously, if we talk in dollars, they're obviously lower because people were orienting at NGO and it was in Rivna, so it, it doesn't catch up with the inflation. It's good that the market is operating. We are totally against any uh, alteration of the law that, that would allow the legal entities to buy out the land and I think the majority of the market is against it as well. 
So I think that the land market is developing in quite a natural way even during the war. I will have last question in this part of our meeting uh, about the forecast for the next year. You, you already mentioned that, that we have this euro integration piece of work. Maybe there, there is something else that you would like to cover, to comment. The, so yeah, it's a big piece of work bureaucratic your integration work about the forecast is the work related to irrigation with and with the implementation of a number of projects like infrastructure projects we signed a memorandum with Poland of the uh, oil pipe the sunflower seed oil pipe the Polish already identified their company because it's uh, the pipe will be 90 percent in the area going through the area of poland and they know their legislation better it's important for us to uh, give the status to this project that will facilitate all the procedures because under normal conditions the construction part is taken way less than the const when the, than the coordination and negotiation themselves. The main part of the work to be focused on this year, for example, if last year it was the export of uh, grain, to, now it's the increase of the liquidity in the market. So any program programs that would improve it is something that we will be doing next year because it's lacking in the summer in the spring during harvesting season it will be lacking during autumn during another sowing campaign that's why because such problems they are they influence they have impact for a number of years, we think that the next year, what what will be the problems faced by the agrarians next year? First of all, is the lack of funds is the main pro problem. Another thing, I think that, or we hope that, that in case there is no global recession, the good uh, grain price will be maintained we hope that starting with the middle of the spring the price of logistics will be will become lower uh, the other thing is whose grain will be kept well the weather nobody can influence the weather and at the same time we think that there will be a fall of the harvest, the decrease of the harvest in Ukraine due to a, due to a number of reasons. And first of all, because of the... So the, the, the main crop that was given most of the income was the corn. And it has a number of risks in terms of sowing, in terms of harvesting. First of all, is the lack of funds it requires a lot of nitrogen fertilizers and they are pretty costly now and in view of the position of the manufacturers in the that area they i think they will remain expensive and even in the autumn we already observed that the amount of procurement of the nitrogen fertilizers already fell and due to a number of reasons including uh, weather and power shutdowns and missile attacks we uh, the big amount of corn is being harvested during spring and the fields would not be ready for sowing by spring and the farmers will switch to a number of other crops for example soy and uh, sunflower and they give less harvest than the corn usually and the harvest will be lower 
due to this number of reasons. So we are wrapping up our conversation. We were witnessing the press conference of by Mikola Solsky, the Minister of Agrarian Policy and Food, and I appreciate this conversation now that our video operators are wrapping up. I, I invite all the journalists to check out the new website of the Ministry. I know that there's a lot of useful practical information, so the team of the Ministry hope that it will be a good oh, it will be 